Hey, I've been thinking a lot about this uh, pyramid discovery. Well, I'm going to put discovery in, in quotations. You may have been following. I'm just going to, for reference, so you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to pull this up really quick. It's this, uh, here's a video. So they did some scans. Apparently, they, uh, oh, I'm pull the volume down so I can run this video. The story goes, these, sci these Italian scientists used ground penetrating satellite, I don't know if radar is the right word, but they used uh, what's called tomography, which is penetration technology. And they measured um, underground, underneath the Khafre pyramid. So this has been on my mind a lot the last week or so, since this news broke like four or five days ago. I mean, the pyramids, ancient history, the civilization of Atlantis. These are some of the most fascinating things on Earth to me. I study ge geo maps. I look at like topological mapography. I look at like ancient riverbeds and riverways around the eye of the Sahara and just imagine you can see ancient pathways dug and farms and stuff and carved out ground. You, you see the ancient culture permeate that area. And I. I just love the story of Atlantis and like the history and the, the fast. I'm fascinated with it to the point where I write stories about it. And just I've been dreaming about this, this civilization since I was like 10 or 12 years old, since I saw it in a video game. And I thought, what if that was real? Well, it turns out it might be. And I'm now I'm the evidence weighs on that. Yeah, there was there was stuff going on before. Before the Stone Age. The cradle of civilization, industrial and, and agriculture and, and, you know, irrigation and architecture that, that was probably passed on from ancient civilizations in my opinion anyway what what happened was they penetrated under the ground of the coffer pyramid which is the middle of the three great the three pyramids the great pyramids um and they think what this scientist these italian scientists said they they convert he's got his proprietor this is a thing it's not corroborated no other scientists have done any studies on it there's no paper on it that i've seen um they did a press release saying that they found it it would be absolutely humiliating if it turned out that they were lying for them, it would discredit and ruin their careers forever moving forward with so many, so many people. So I kind of wonder, like, why would they do that? I just kind of assumed that it was real at first. But as I dug and I dug and I dug, I found no corroborating evidence. So this could be completely uh, fake. Keep that in mind. I'm going to show you what they claim they found is uh, giant wells. They call them wells. These So this is the pyramid you can see here. This is the, the, the middle pyramid. And on inside apparently they found five of these granite structures now these look identical apparently they're all identical and then this thing over here which i don't know exactly what's going on with this and i believe these i don't know that they claim these are granite but the king's chamber in the great pyramid was it khufu's pyramid the biggest one is made of granite and looks like this it's got the five slabs and the the sloped roof like this they're made of granite which is a crystal I think that these particular, if this is real, I'm going to give you my, my purported belief, but let me, before I do that, let me continue to go. So they got the quartz, these uh, granite things up above. They're all facing north, I believe is what they say. And then underneath they have these, they look like pillars, but they're actually wells, according to the scan. Hollow, like they're wells, dug that go down deep. And they go deeper and deeper and deeper. This zooms in. These are the actual scans they claim to have, have received, which show you the, the building, the, those granite buildings that I was just talking about with the one, two, three, four, five and the sloped roof. They think that's what those are. Um, I don't know how they got that out of that blurry mess, but that's what they think those are. See, the, I got to watch your cognitive bias because I want to believe this stuff is true also, which is a big problem. So it goes down deep, showing some more. You can see it here from another angle. That's pretty cool. Okay. The, the wells, they go all the way down 600 and what is it? 656 meters according to the research. Uh, which is a long way. In fact, let me show you for reference. It's like like this, they think. The rendition would be these wells go down like this deep underneath the pyramid. Super far, 646 meters. And then below this is another 1,500 meters or so of activity. Back to the, the visualization here so we can wrap this up. So they think that's what's going on. These, these wells are dug. The, and then these yellow things are... Uh, they believe these these things wrapping around are like a spiral staircases that they would take and they would walk down the well down to those big cubic 80 meter by 80 meter cubes. So let me see if I can pull up any other evidence. Just want to give you uh, here's the apparently there's a paper out there somewhere. I've not been able to find it. I don't think it's a scientific paper, but.
but they, there's a paper out there somewhere. I, I just haven't been able to find this. Um, and then, so that's it. They, they did tomography. They say that there's underground wells that lead down super, super, super deep under the pyramids. Now, I don't know if this is real, but I can tell you it aligns with a lot of what I think could be happening with the pyramids. I thought for a long time, like, why are there, why is that King's chamber in the great pyramid? Why is that, that granite structure down there buried by limestone pyramids? It looks like it was buried. Like there's these, this, these five slab, you know, the King's chambers. Why are they there? What was that? Was it a burial tomb? Was that all it was? I've heard it's a sensory deprivation chamber where people go in there. They'd fill the sarcophagi with uh, salt water they'd like not fill it, but put salt water in there. People would get in there and lay down and cover it. And then other dudes would like, Oh, they would chant. They would like vibrate the chamber and people would have like transcendent, you know, psychoactive experiences from the similar to a sensory deprivation tank. And I, and Tesla, Nikola Tesla was fascinated with like the telluric current of earth. There's this current underneath the surface of the planet that follows along riverways and like underground aquifers and stuff. And it's, there's, it's like a low voltage current called the telluric current. Let me see if I can pull that up actually, just so you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'll just generally pull up like a Wikipedia article, for instance, for some reference, I'm not making this up. And this is pretty fascinating too. If you don't know much about the telluric current, it's worth understanding what this is. Uh, the earth current, electrical current that flows underground or through sea resulting from natural and human induced causes. Extremely low frequency, traverses long, large areas of the surface, crust, mantle. So, you know, Earth magnetic field has a magnetic flow, has a, has a current flowing through it, which is probably helping produce the magnetic field. Anyway, Nikola Tesla was fascinated with it and thought that uh, he could tap into it and was attempting to to power, use it as a power station and thought maybe that the, uh, the pyramids were doing the same thing and that the pyramids were being used as power stations. Now, if these wells underneath the pyramids are real if there really are deep wells underneath the pyramids i'm thinking maybe what they were doing was like a baghdad battery let me pull that up i'm sure you're familiar with a baghdad battery at this point but let me get you familiar if you're if you're not a hundred percent uh familiar the ancient technology they found these i don't know how old 150 bc 223 ad ancient technology where they would take like a, a clay pot with uh what do they put in there is it an iron rod? It's a galvanic cell. Oh, physical description. So it's a terracotta pot with a cylinder made of rolled copper and an iron rod. So that's what we're looking at here. I believe that's the iron rod, and here's the rolled copper cylinder. Or it's the other way around, rolled copper, iron rod. And then they'd uh, put these inside the pot, and then they fill it with like a, an electrolyte wine or you know some sort of acid fruit juice whatever and it would uh create an electrical current and then they would link these batteries up they would call them they consider them they use them like batteries and they would link them up to each other and produce large amounts of current because they'd have all these batteries connected so i'm wondering if these wells underneath the pyramids they would are like this hollow Baghdad battery to each well is like one of these and they would dip they would like lower a conductor like an iron rod into the wells, like long rods connected to these granite buildings, these king's chambers, these granite looking buildings, which were the, the vibrating like nodes. So what they would do is they'd tap into the earth's current with these conductors and the, the, the electrolyte solution was the salt water that was running through the underground aquifers. And then it would produce an electric charge. They'd get a current up the conductor and then it would get stored in these granite chambers these these king's chamber looking things these granite chambers and those things would just hold this charge and vibrate and because they're crystal like a granite crystal they would cause other things of the same shape and material to start to vibrate as well so they would literally like be able to pick up like a piezoelectric charge off of these buildings and then they would use just like a tesla coil if you turn on a tesla coil and you hold an uh, an incandescent light up near it, the light turns on, which is a very, very cool experiment. If you've never done that before, you turn on a Tesla coil, Nikola Tesla's invention, one of his inventions, and uh, you just hold like a fluorescent light near it and the light come, turns on. And I wonder if that's what they were doing in the pyramids is they were using these granite 
buildings to as like Tesla coils being charged from the earth. And then they would be able to light up tubes and stuff all over the, like anything in the vicinity of the pyramids would be electrified, would be lit up. And then I wondered about like, maybe they were out exposed back in the day, like 10, 15,000 years ago. Maybe it was just, you know, granite stations and then the wells underneath. And at some point, another culture came along and buried them with limestone to like, be like, fuck that ancient culture. They were our enemies. We want to forget them. Never let it be known. And they covered it with limestone pyramids. Or maybe that the, the granite charging stations were, were too dangerous to go near. So they had to bury it with limestone to protect people so they didn't get shocked and killed. And uh, limestone itself is a crystal. It's made of a couple, few different crystals, a couple different crystals. But limestone's a little different because it's also, uh, it's like crystals with um, coral. There's coral, like it's calcite, mostly limestone's mostly calcite and, and some other stuff. But like the coral will attach to the calcite and just, as far as I can tell, is sucking that calcium getting that nutrition off that lime, off that calcite. And then it, if it molds with it and becomes one rock, as we call limestone. So underground under the pyramids is, a, is like limestone. It's on limestone. So it's very possible that they just, as they were mining these, these wells, they just used that limestone to cover the pyramid, which would indicate that they built the pyramid at the same time they built the wells. But I don't know if that's necessarily true. You know, it's possible that the ancient Egyptians, as we know them, came along at some point and resettled on top of ancient technology that they didn't understand or that they did understand that they figured out. It's possible that that happened. I wonder, because if it, since it is made of limestone and there is that crystal vibration, it might be it might it might have acted as like a, a resistor of the power. So like it is. But, you know, at that point, it's like. You'd have to do experiments on like, I mean, you got to excavate. If you really want to figure this out first, we need multiple groups of people doing um, like scans. And we, we, we need to, I don't say we need to start excavating. I don't want to destroy the property unintentionally, but we need more scans. We need like more ground penetrating scans. And this guy said he's got this proprietary system where he converts photons to phonons and no one's really done it yet. And that's how they're able to measure the seismic activity. Uh, and, and see the paper or I think in their press release, they claimed it was literally or the t there was they did another scan like in 2022 with the same technology, apparently. And they said that it literally turns with the micro movements of their measurement tools. It, it, cre it makes the pyramids transparent, like you can literally see all the way through them and everything inside of them. You can see through everything, which allows you to map it. Well, we need more of that. We need more open source the the, the process. I know he wants to the creator if it's a real technology that he built he probably wants to profit off of it but like you want to prove it you're gonna to have to show us the data you know we need to know what was being used to, to measure this and we need more measurements from different groups and then we're going to need an excavation at some point we're going to need an excavation. i mean just because there's sand there and they're there doesn't mean we can't like dig it dig it out and explore it a little bit probably a really smart move to do especially if there's ancient technology because now my mind starts to wonder like if this actually is real and boy do i want it to be because that's cool if they were experimenting with vibration and piezoelectric forces and like using rather than explosive energy production, like thermal combustion, they were using vibration to charge the surroundings. They might have got they're interfering with the Earth's current and, and made the magnetic field of Earth mess up. They might have messed up the Earth's magnetic field, which allowed the comets of the torrid meteor stream to fall onto the planet and cause that cataclysmic flood at 12,800 years ago at the end of the Younger Dryas. And, and the humans may, may have been involved with fucking up the Earth's magnetic field. It, it may, maybe, maybe, maybe this technology, like it's the, I always think of it as the, in, the opposite of like nuclear war. Like, whereas the worst case accidental, oops, we, we messed up with, with power generation of explosive technology is nu thermonuclear war. We, we messed up our atmosphere and, and all that um with with combustion but or whatever that you know nuclear explosive is the opposite would be the in, implosive tech where you're forcing pressure inward to create power and if we all the opposite of a nuclear war would be like the earth's own magnetic field disruption which allows us to become bombarded by cosmic stuff and that maybe ancient culture did that on accident they got so powerful and they used so much power that they messed up mama's cradle earth 
Maybe. Maybe, because normally the, the Earth's magnetic field bounces those, those meteors off. And that, that flood was, well, was pretty pretty potent. Anyway, just some thoughts I had. Oh, let me, let me get my face back on here. It's been on my mind a lot the last week, and I haven't said anything about it. I, I, I started to research it, and I was like, I'm going to do a deep dive video with like diagrams and explanations. And as I was doing it, I just couldn't find, I couldn't find any corroborating evidence. So jury's still out for me, but uh, if you hadn't heard about it yet, here you go. Apparently there's an, a new discovery. There's a lot of people claiming it's real, too. So just watch out. The people saying they found a new... No, 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 no. They claim to have discovered a cool story. Jury's out, but we'll we'll see, man. Technology is uh, expanding, and, and uh, we're definitely learning at a rapid pace. So this is a cool time to be alive. <laughs>